formalities here. No national anthem, no introduction to the starting lineup. So there you go. Give a cruise. McLean as well as Statman and Johnson on the floor first to begin things for Daytona State. And then, of course, a quick look at your home standing Eagles. Have got Jones, Braden, Caldwell, Parker, and Eskridge all on the floor to begin things. So here we go with your round ball on a Saturday. What a matchup, by the way, between these two. And maybe a little bit of a deceiving matchup in that on paper it may not look particularly good because you've got an 11th ranked and a 12-0 squad against an unranked and a 5-3 Coastal North team. But do not take these Eagles lightly. As I mentioned, since that November 14th loss in overtime to Delgado, they have gone on a tear and beaten some of the stronger teams in the ACCC. And if you're looking for a little revenge after the loss here to Delgado, they went to Louisiana and knocked off the Dolphins by 21. So definitely a different look as compared to the last time that we saw this squad. Jumper from long range, good. And the 2-2 tie broken as it is brought down the floor by Braden, at least part of the floor. Braden getting his second start of the season. Tom side with it is Jones. Jones averaging 17 points per contest. Working it over to the timeline on a Saturday one, about eight days shy of Christmas. Last time that we'll see these two teams on the hardwood as the air ball launched by Eskridge. That was a desperation shot as the shot clock was dwindling. And it'll be Daytona State in possession. Giffa bringing it to this end of the floor. Halftime, a conversation with the ACC C commissioner, Dean Myrick. Over into the corner, Cruz launching the three ball, no good. Snagging the rebound. That is Carl Parker. Parker, a dominant force on the boards. Into the corner. Eskridge thinking about the three, instead goes to the elbow and drops in the two. And we've got a one point game. Stolen away, opportunity for the Eagles to snag the lead. To the glass, no good. Board by Statman. Stolen away. Jones. He'll lay it up. He'll lay it in. Eagles take their first lead of the game. Both of these teams have played no pansy of a schedule early. They have taken on some really tough teams. Daytona State playing in Northwest Florida State. They play to Pensacola State. They are taking on Tallahassee Community College next. Meanwhile, for Coastal North. Powerhouses in the ACCC. Chipola, number two current team in men's NJCAA basketball. So these squads have not been afraid to take on powerhouses. Over to Caldwell, and Caldwell dropping in the three. Chapman trying to match it on the other end of the floor, and he will do just that. Statman averaging 10 points a game. Dropping in the three ball to make it a 9-8 contest. Largest lead early has been three. Current lead, one. Brayden to Parker, dumps it down low. Drive to the glass by Caldwell, and Caldwell will draw the foul. 
Cruz guilty of the infraction, putting Caldwell at the stripe. Opening moments of this one, not quite four minutes into the game. Caldwell, a 93% free throw shooter. This is a very good free throw shooting team. And obviously contributing to the goodness, if you will, is Caldwell. With a 94% free throw shooting average. And he'll get both. Into the corner, open for the three ball. That is a miss by McLean. Braden feeding it to Parker, able to get a quick hand and tip it away was McLean. It will stay in Coastal North hands. Our last broadcast before the holidays, after the holidays, boy, it's packed. And between Christmas and New Year's, we're in America's big women's basketball tournament there. Three ball launched by Jones. Trying to reciprocate on the other end of the floor is Gruan, and Gruan with a miss. Fourteen eight, early eagle lead, five minutes or thereabouts into the contest. Parker driving it down low, kicks it into the corner. Jones launching the three. No, nope, he'll take it to the hoop. Got fouled just outside of the paint. And apparently that is going to be charged to Giffa. Typically the guy who says no can't be me is the guy that it is. And Giffa was the guy saying nope, don't think it was me, so it was. Seth Jones, a 57% free throw shooter going to the strike. Here comes Chris Smith into the game, also Greg Kennedy for Coastal North. Parker will exit, Caldwell will exit. Still got the starters of Brayton, Eskridge, and the guy at the stripe, Jones. Getting in trouble, Giffa down below and just got rid of it. Winds up in Eagle hands over into the corner. Jones off on the three try. It is tipped out of bounds and will stay in Eagle hands. Well, these Eagles were supposed to have been playing basketball on Wednesday, but again, inclement weather. Hampered plans to take on Bevel State. Bell State has twice been on the schedule and twice had to have the game postponed as a result of bad weather. Went over to Kennedy and Kennedy will get bumped. And foul charge to Garcia. Braylon Garcia coming into the game. And picking up the personal, sending Kennedy to the strike. According to stats, Kennedy hasn't had a free throw until right then and there. Misses a pair. Daytona State five times this year and scoring into triple digits. As Garcia brings it inside, draws the foul of Chris Smith. And Garcia will go to the line for the first trip to the stripe for the Falcons. Oh, 
Garcia, a 59% free throw shooter. A very good Daytona State free throw shooting team, 77%. But a couple of misses as Kennedy comes down with a rebound. And another foul on this end of the floor. Non shooting, it'll be brought in from the baseline. Halftime, we're going to be talking with Dean Myrick, the commissioner of the ACCC. So check out that conversation, talking about some of the changes that are forthcoming and some of the new additions. Jones off on the three. Rebound grabbed by Gruon. Three on the other end of the floor. It's good. Gruon delivers. Takes a big chunk out of the lead. Makes it a five-point game. Down low to Smith. Spins into the paint. Got a nice look after the defense of Garcia literally fell to the hardwood. Garcia getting it down low to Cruz on the lob, but Cruz is fouled. Kennedy said he didn't do it. Blue said he did, and that's got Cruz shooting. Well, thought Cruz would shoot, but the officials say no, he was not in the act of shooting foul prior to the lob. Brought in from the baseline. Into the paint, grew on with a miss, batted around, grew on, tipping it over to Garcia. Grew on with a jumper out of Kennedy's hands, winds up in the hands of Kylan Green. Now in, over to Garcia, too strong from down low, and then fouled is Angel Smith. Seth Jones picking up the personal that's got Smith at the line. Well, if the early indications are any semblance of what the rest of the game is going to be like, buckle up. 12-0 Falcons, 5-3 Eagles. And these Falcons have played most of their games either at home or at a neutral site. They're only 1-0 on the road in non-neutral site games. Got a timeout on the floor, 13.04 left to play here in half number one. And the home team with a five point lead. It's the dreaded appointment. You've put it off long enough, you've run out of excuses, and now you've got to face your fears head on. Fortunately, there's someone there who won't hold your feelings against you. Somebody whose efforts instead will give you your best selfie smile. You'll thank her when it's over. Be somebody. Enroll in the dental assisting program at Coastal Alabama Community College. Thirteen oh four left to play in half number one. Five point eagle lead here at the house. Jaquan Pack checking into the lineup for Coastal North. Our last look at the ACCC until next year. Of course, that's only what about two or three weeks away. And as a matter of fact, our first ACCC game next year will be right here. That Bevel State matchup that's been postponed twice because of weather. 
hopefully on the 4th of no um, January, we'll be able to get that game played. And it'll happen here at 4 o'clock on the 4th. Drive to the glass. Overshooting the hoop is Eskridge. Nearly taken away. Able to get it back was Green. And John Hart nearly took it away for the Eagles. Shot out front. Guan with a miss. Rebounded by Pack with a quick outlet. Hart to the hoop. Over goes to Cruz. Cruz putting up the jumper from the charity stripe off the rim. Garcia able to toss it back onto the floor, but tipped initially away by Hart, then back down low. Toss to Garcia, and he will get bumped. Then you get the ball slammed, and that's going to be a technical. And that's going to get Chris Smith out of the game. Not on a permanent basis, by the way, but... Coach Chuck Taylor saying, all right, Chris, got to come out. And I think he is pleading that it slipped, and it, I guess, could have slipped, but it was a little frustration with tossing that one at least in the direction of the knees. Maybe he didn't mean for it to come out of the hands, but it did, and that's going to bring the technical. So Cruz gets fouled. He'll shoot free throws, and then we'll see if Cruz shoots the tax. I would think Cruz is going to shoot the technicals as well. He has not missed this year. Well, it is Cruz who is who shot the technicals. It actually is Garcia who was fouled. I thought it was Cruz who had been fouled, but it is Garcia. So Cruz on the technicals and Garcia on the free throws after the foul, which was charged to Kennedy, but of course Smith picking up the technical too. So an opportunity for a four-point swing here. Well, it won't be four. Garcia with a miss on the first of two. And he'll miss a pair. Parker back into the game and comes down with the board off the second miss. Out front to Jones, over it goes to Pack. Into the corner, Pack putting up the three ball, rims out, able to grab it as Hart. And keep it on this end of the floor. Hart putting up the three, it is good. Hart hits it, the lead goes to eight. Cruz responding on the other end of the floor for the Falcons. Hart and Jones, a little back and forth. Into the corner pack, bringing the baseline, tipped out of the hands. Cruz had it and tipped away by Parker. Dive for it in the corner. And yet Kennedy and Garcia battling for it. And let's see who the official awards it to. It will be Eagles basketball. Put in play from the baseline out to Jones. And now you've got, I think, time to reset the clock. So time called by the official to reset the clock. Took a couple of seconds off the game clock and now moved the shot clock down to seven. Put him playing to Jones, four on the shot clock. Trying to lean in, draw the foul. Instead, he'll draw the travel. And 
Falcons with the basketball. Garcia to put it in play to Green. Out to Cruz, hit a three moments ago. This went off the mark. Hart for the board. Lost in the paint. Garcia's got it going the other way. Launching the three ball short on the shot is Gruon. The Falcons get it back in another opportunity to slice into the current five point lead nearly halfway through the half. Fan into the paint, leaning in. Kennedy committing the foul from the backside on Smith. And we'll put Angel Smith at the stripe, an 83% free throw shooter on a 77% free throw shooting team. And an opportunity to make it a one possession game with still obviously a ton of time to go in this one. You've got Smith shooting better than 80% from the line for the Falcons. You've got Gruon. You've got Statman. You've got Kariotis. You've got Johnson and Cruz. All shooting better than 80%. Tipped out of bounds, 9.48 to play. Half number one brought in by... Hart in play to Jones as we get back to the action. Into the corner to Caldwell. He's already got one three and another. So Caldwell with a bomb from the corner. Over it goes to Statman, and Statman will draw the foul. And it's Caldwell guilty. Well, I gotta have a shooter, and I think Statman, who's headed towards the sidelines, is the guy that needs to shoot. I don't know if he's got an issue with Thought maybe there was something bleeding for a moment and he was going over to a medic. I think he was just unaware. He was the guy that was needed at the free throw line. And was talking to one of the assistant coaches. All the while the officials are going, hey, hey, come over here. You got to get to this line and shoot at that back basket. So Statman hitting one and now two. Well, a quick trip over after the conversation with the coach. No distraction for Stadman. Just methodically drops in the two from the line. Into the paint. Hart for two. And is laid in by Garcia. Four point contest. Jones top of the key. Eskridge over on the sidelines getting ready to come in for the Eagles at the next dead ball. Jones too strong with the three. Horn grabbed by Smith, hands it over to Garcia. Statman with it, and he's going to be hooked. You can see the arm going backwards as Statman is hooked by Hart. Yeah, that will have Statman at the line. Shooting a one and one. One more eagle foul in the half, and it's the double bonus the rest of the way in half one for the Falcons. 
Statman, an 80% free throw shooter, 10 points per game for these Daytona State Falcons. Who I mentioned earlier have scored 105 times their highest against Palm Beach when they put 116 on the board. Jones over to Hart. Hart to the drive, and there's a foul called on Giffa. That is the last of the non shooting fouls in the half for the Falcons. That is foul number six, and I believe the second on Giffa. Jaquan Pack back in as Hart will go to the sidelines. Over goes to Pack. He'll shoot the three ball. The left-hander no good. With it initially was Caldwell taken away. Falcons with it. Statman bringing it baseline. There is the offensive charge to Statman. Knockdown Pack and Statman picking up the personal. Eskridge back into the game, and he'll put it in play from the baseline. Meanwhile, Giffa coming out of the game, into the game, is starter Nick McClain for the Falcons. Not only a halftime conversation with the ACCC commissioner, we'll also check out scores from elsewhere, you know, like NFL playing today. There's a jam by Garcia. Twenty-eight apiece, seven fourteen to play in the half. Down in front and goes to Eskridge. Eskridge with a nice move. Got a look, couldn't get it to drop. Rebounded by Rodriguez. Statman the jumper in and out. Swatted over to Smith, and Smith will launch the, was that a long two or a three? Haven't seen the official indicate, the scoreboard hasn't changed yet. Do have a timeout on the floor asked for by the Eagles, and now we've got it posted as a three. So Smith breaking the 28 all tie with the three ball from the left side. Preparing for surgery is like getting ready for the big game. You arrive early. You get your mind right. You make sure every tool is ready and the team has the right equipment. Your patient may never know your name. They may never realize that somebody cared enough to ensure all the little tasks were done right. But that's okay. You do. Be somebody. Enroll in the Surgical Technology Program at Coastal Alabama Community College. Falcons had fallen behind by eight. Tied up at 28, take the lead, 31-28. Prompting an eagle timeout with 6.46 to play here in half number one. Braden back into the game, brings it down for the Eagles. Over to Caldwell, Pack weaving his way through traffic. Eskridge, over to Jones. Six on the shot clock. Down low, Eskridge, you talk about execution. To perfection by the Eagles as Eskridge gets the high percentage look with a second left on the shot clock. Yeah. 
One apiece game, Eskridge off the miss. Giving it to Jones. Brought over to Eskridge, into the corner, it goes to Caldwell. Eagles trying to reclaim the lead as we get close to five to play here in half number one. Too strong, able to grab it, Pack puts up the three, in and out, Smith with it. And you gotta travel. Garcia coming into the game, let's see if it's Statman who is going out. Well, here's Garcia in. Uh, it's not Statman into Smith. Statman is explaining why it's not a travel. He is pleading with the official. But the official not seeing it quite the way Statman did. Travel turn gives it back to the Eagles with another opportunity to reclaim the lead. Jones, good move to the hoop. Out front, it goes to Statman, thinking about the three. Pack defense changes his mind. Cruz. Eskridge defending, fade away, drops it in. Cruz, the top scorer on this Falcon squad, averaging nearly 21 per game. And the lead seesaws back into the hands, briefly of the Falcons with the drive by Braden. Back over to the Eagles. Garcia to Statman, putting up the three. He's got it. Statman is a 43% three-point shooter. Easy lay-in by Jones. Thirty-six apiece, three forty-nine to play in the half. Air ball launched by McLean. Here comes Greg Kennedy back into the ball game for the Eagles. Pack will exit. Caldwell looking down low. Eskridge well covered by Garcia. Braden out at the top of the key. Hits the reset button. Goes to the charity stripe and drops it in from there. Daytona State averaging 98 points a game. Kennedy reaching in. At least I think it was Kennedy. Caldwell was in the vicinity, too. It was Kennedy. And that'll put Garcia at the line. Coastal North averaging 75 a game, so I'm not real good in the math department. But I'm thinking you're looking at about 173 points a game between these two. Garcia struggling at the stripe. That is four straight misses for Garcia. Jones with the top of the key. That is a long two, but not quite long enough. Garcia coming down with the board. Eagles with a bucket lead. Giffa kicking it to Statman, and Statman an air ball on the three. About half the time those threes are launched by Statman. They are dropped in, but that one not. Stolen by Garcia, 
and he'll lay it in to tie it up. Pack back into the game, leans in with the left hand and drops it in. That is Cruz. Pack will grab the rebound. Down it goes to Jones. Back over to Pack for three. He's got it. Last five Eagle points scored by Pack. Giffle with the turnaround. Got it back. Falls to the hardwood, a whistle, and are we going to get a foul or a travel? We're going to get a foul on Braden. And Giffa apparently hurt. So Giffa getting tended to by the Coastal North trainer. But apparently okay. Well, a little extracurricular activity. I don't think Jones wanted to come off the floor and I think Coach Taylor was like, uh, you gonna do what I say. So the discussion between he and Jones continuing, and Jones, you can see him there in the corner being escorted to the locker room or near the locker room for maybe a little cool-down period. Meanwhile, at the stripe, Giffa dropping in the first. Quick foul. I believe that was called on McLean. And it's got Caldwell going to the stripe. Three-point eagle lead, 90 seconds to play in the half. Front end of the one and one, no good. Statman with the board. Smith with a handoff to Giffa. Back it goes to Smith. Was open briefly at the top of the key. Drives and is charged with the offensive. Well, I see Seth Jones back over on the bench, so maybe his cooldown period over near the locker room over. Dropping in another three is Pack. He has ignited things here in the latter stages of the first half for the Eagles, extending the lead back to six. There's another offensive, and this time it was Smith kind of tripping over his own feet getting the offensive now he's pleading his case and I think he's suggesting that he was pushed from the back side I did not see the push if that's what he is pleading it looked like he just kind of stumbled and that will turn into the offensive put him playing a hard who's back into the ball game Taking it baseline, feeds it out the pack. Over into the corner to Braden. That is thrown away down low to Giffa.
into the corner. Statman off from the three ball. Caldwell wraps it up. Over it goes to Pack. And with a shot clock off, Eagles hoping for the last shot of the half. They'd like to take an eight or nine point lead into the locker room at halftime. Three a little bit strong for Braden, and that is it for half number one. But the advantage belonging to the Eagles by six. The 11th ranked and unbeaten Falcons. They have run into a buzzsaw. And arguably the hottest team in the ACCC on the men's side. And it's 46-40 at the half. Well, we promised you a halftime conversation with Dean Myrie, the commissioner of the ACCC. We also promised you scores from elsewhere. So we will get to all of that as our halftime continues here on Jock Chai. You're organized. Driven, focused, ready to create the life of luxury in the most beautiful and unique locations, locally and around the world. Discover hospitality management at Coastal Alabama Community College. It is halftime at the half, a 46-40 advantage. Eagles with the lead over the unbeaten Daytona State Falcons. And obviously with 20 minutes of basketball left in the first half, an indication of what's to come. Hang on to your hats. Buckle up. Big 20 minutes of basketball coming up. Quick look at scores elsewhere. NFL, 9.07 to play in the game. Indianapolis with a 36-21 lead over the Minnesota Vikings. Meanwhile, in men's top 25 college basketball, three finals, number 15 Gonzaga defeats number four Alabama, 190, 25th ranked Miami over St. Francis, Pennsylvania, 91-76. It was number eight Kansas beating number 14 Indiana, 84-62. In progress, 418 to play in the game. Number five, Houston with a 54-46 lead over number two, Virginia. 339 to play in the first half, number 17, Mississippi State. Down by six to Nickel State, 26-22 now. And with 706 to play in the first half, number 23, Ohio State. Leading North Carolina, 28-18. Let's see if we've got any college football to talk about. Not sure what ball games are going on. Got the Wasabi Fenway Bowl. Louisville has knocked off Cincinnati 24-7. In the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, 11:30 to play in the first quarter. Fresno State with a seven-zip lead over Washington State. And in the SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl, it is number 14, Oregon State, leading Florida. 10 zip with 2.52 to play in the second. Halftime here, 46-40. Coastal North, Dean Myrick, right after the break. Discover pastry baking at 
Coastal Alabama Community College. It is time for a halftime conversation with Dean Myrick, the commissioner of the ACCC. Commissioner, how are you? We're doing good, Robert. Gearing up for the holidays. Hey, looking forward to it. Got a lot of stuff between now and Christmas, though. And in our last conversation, we were talking about, and I want to kind of continue that. I guess this is the, the sequel to our last conversation. The fact that this year is a little different where basketball is concerned in that you're conference play includes if you're a south team some north games if you're a north team some south teams so tell us how that has panned out we actually started that last year um it kind of developed with covid um you know kind of staying and stayed and and, and doing that and uh, we, we kind of built on with that so this will be our second year you know with with the crossover um you know, those games still count as far as the, the conference standings. Uh, what we did was if you're at school A, you know, last year, you know, you'll host school A this year. So, you know, the, the North and South play home and home against, you know, North and play home and home against North, South home and home. And then they'll play one game against everyone, you know, uh, with, with the crossover. And then we alternated home sites. Um, you know, last year and this year. So, uh, you know, you really have to look at it over a two-year period as far as the travel and, 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 and all of that. But, you know, it's worked out well. It, it's less uh, games that our schools have to define for non-conference, uh, which has helped a lot. I, I heard a lot of that, that, you know, it was getting more and more difficult to define non-conference games. Um, so, it, it's actually been very well. You know, all of our teams get to see each other, play each other. You know, in the past, you know, and I, I've had people ask me at tournaments is, you know, why don't we play everybody? And, I mean, we have teams that hadn't played each other, you know, up until the last couple of years since I've been here in 2012. And uh, so then that's, you know, if, if we're a true conference, you, you should play everybody and, um, you know, not – not go years and not, you know, play a school. So I think it's worked out, um, you know, fantastic. And, you know, it, it's allowed everybody to see everybody and not wait till the tournament and, you know, be the first time you've seen them in a few years. So um, it, it's gone well. Correct me if I'm wrong, and, and I'm wrong so often, you may have to correct me, but aren't there some North teams that play South teams or vice versa that are not conference games. And how is that determined? They, they are now once, and I do the schedule for the conference games. So I will, you know, schedule the North versus now with uh, North uh, home and home. And then the, the one crossover game, you know, after that, if they choose to play, um, you know, another crossover game, you know, that is obviously a non-conference game, but that is completely up to the schools if they want to do uh, a home and home. Uh, but the one that's on the master schedule will count as the conference game um, and not the the additional one. So, and that, that's perfectly fine. If, um, you know, North wants to play a South home and home, you know, they know which game count, counts as the, uh, the conference game. So that's, that that's no problem at all, and you know we hope that you know once we go D one D two that you know even though I will not do those schedules you know for for the crossovers that you know D ones and D twos will still play each other you know within the state and and we have pushed that you know from from a budget standpoint as well as you know supporting you know all of our schools by by scheduling everybody. Now, when it separates next year to where you've got some D1, you've got some D2, the conference games, though, will only be within their division? Yes. So the, the home and home, 
and both will play a state schedule. So everybody will play everybody. Uh, there was not enough teams split up in the north south because you know you were looking at you know eight maybe ten conference games at the most you know which leaves twenty games to find outside of the conference which is um, it's not impossible but it, it's difficult so uh, we will play a state schedule and everybody will play everybody home and home and um, I'll do those schedules and which will be mostly you know January February as in the past. Uh, but, you know, the D1s, and we're, like, again, pushing that to play D2s and vice versa um, to, to, to support all of our schools and, and to help with scheduling. And the conference play, let's see if I can ask this like I am thinking it. The two divisions will have absolutely nothing to do with one another from an official or conference perspective. And what I'm getting at is – let's say a tiebreaker scenario in one of the divisions, would a competition, if you're looking for quality wins, would competition against another division come into play? It would not. Um, so, you know, if and I'll use our website as an example. You know, now you go to a website, you'll see state basketball and you'll see north-south. Um, you know, next year when you go to that, you'll see division one, division two. Uh, there'll be one set of standings um, per division, and each will be um, kept separately. You know, all the tiebreakers will be kept separately. So, um, you know, Division two games versus a Division one will not come into play as far as the tiebreaker or, you know, determining anything like that. So, um, they'll, it'll kind of be like the North-South, um, but it will be Division one, Division two. From a media perspective, there is, I have to admit, kind of this anticipation at the divisions where you've got one and two uh, starting in 23-24. Is that true? I mean, do you feel that inside the schools as well, that there's kind of this uh, anticipation of what's going to happen, or is it just business as usual? I um, I, I definitely wouldn't say business as usual. Um, I don't know if it's a nervousness. Um, and it, I think you could probably say it's more curiosity. You know, I've been through it. I, I've, I've, you know, I've been in that situation where we had division one, two, and three. Um, so, and I've tried to parlay that to where, you know, this is really not, um, you know, to be simple, a, a big deal. Um, and I'll be honest with you, if, if we didn't have a website, um, and we didn't announce it, you would probably never know we were even doing it. And in the long run, it's really going to only affect one team um, as far as postseason, and that will be, um, you know, one extra team will go to a Division Two national tournament. Um, but what it will do and create is more opportunities for our teams and coaches and student athletes to experience, you know, postseason. You know, whereas, you know, we may have teams that uh, do not qualify for postseason. You know, when we're all in Division One, you know, due to different, um, I hate to say obstacles, but you know, some some are, are better than others. Um, and I'm not saying talent or anything like that, but, you know, just maybe from a, you know, geographical, you know, situation and, and recruiting and so on and so forth. So, you know, the, having those teams separated, you know, and it, it was completely the school's choice, you know, what, what they wanted to do. Uh, we've had some that have gone Division One and some and Division Two and others, which is perfectly fine. And, um, you know, they've got to find that fit. Uh, but it's going to create more opportunities for, you know, teams, student athletes, like I said, to to experience postseason. And, um, you know, and instead of one team going to a national tournament, we'll have two. And, you know, it's and that's going to be a great thing for for the conference is to have more teams experience in a national level. Definitely looking forward to it from a personal perspective. Uh, Dean Myrick, the commissioner of the ACCC. Our guest at halftime, thanks so much for being with us. Yes, sir. And Merry Christmas, Robert. You as well.
everybody. Welcome back as we get set for second half action. A six-point lead that belongs to the homestanding Eagles trying to upset the 11th ranked and previously unbeaten or currently unbeaten Falcons squad. Falcons with possession of the basketball as we get second half action underway. Cruz gets fouled by Caldwell. It'll be a non-shooting foul and brought in from the baseline. Fouls were a plenty in the first half. And as a matter of fact, Eagles put the Falcons into the double bonus. Meanwhile, the Falcons put the Eagles into the bonus with the first half fouls. Cruz falls to the hardwood. The official says he was fouled. He'll go to the stripe and shoot three after missing from long range. And if that's Caldwell, and it is, that's two quick ones on Caldwell. And Cruz a little slow going to the strike. And reach down to massage the ankle. Cruz a very good shooter. I mean, obviously he scores to the tune of 21 per contest. And as a guy that scores a lot of points, he is frequently fouled, and he has yet to miss a free throw. So he likes going to the strike. And thus far, who's hit two of two, here's the last of the three. It's good, too. And according to stats, now 13 games into the year, Cruz has yet to miss a free throw. Fender Caldwell, finger roll wouldn't drop. Got the look, couldn't get it to fall. On the other end of the floor, Giffo will drop it in. It's a one, make that a, yeah, one point game. Trying to do a little math in my head prior to the points registering on the scoreboard. And yeah, suspect in a lot of school subjects. Math, probably the most significant of which. Over to Parker. Now front Caldwell gives it to Jones. Jones with the drive. Over to Eskridge at the elbow. And there's a foul on the floor. And Statman may be the guilty party. Same five that began the game, begin the second half for the Eagles. With Jones, Braden, Caldwell, Parker, and Eskridge. And meanwhile, same is true for the Falcons. They've got Giffa Cruz, McLean, Statman, and Johnson on the floor. Over to Eskridge, short on the short two. Giff on the other end of the floor after the McLean rebound. McLean feeds it into the corner. Dropped in by Giffa. Two point Falcon lead. Two minutes into half number two. Eskridge down to Parker. Parker looking for his first points of the game, drawing the foul. Johnson got him. And Parker will go to the stripe. Parker 50-50 on free throws. Heads to the stripe to shoot, trying to tie the game up at the 18-08 mark. He's like, hey, I planned that. You know, a little rim action up into the air about two or three feet, drop through the hoop. One more for Parker. Parker averaging eight points per contest. This one will miss, rebounded by Cruz. Cruz with a miss down to the other end of the floor. Jones short on the shot, tipped by Parker. Loose ball, out of bounds, and it got Caldwell last. (laughs) 
Nobody's had a double-digit lead in this one. The biggest lead has been eight. The biggest Daytona State lead has been three. The eight-point advantage belonged to the Eagles on a couple of occasions in the first half. Cruz bringing it into the paint. Rebounded by Jones. Eagles trying to reclaim the lead. Over to Braden. Looks down to Parker. Brings it into the paint. Shot up. Shot good. Foul as well. Johnson picking up another personal. I think that is three second half fouls on Johnson. Not sure about that, but we do know Parker's back at the strike. This try, time trying to cap off an old-fashioned three. And he'll do just that. Giffle with it. Over it goes to McLean, directing traffic as he backs his way to the Eagle at midcourt. Giffle lobbing down the cruise. Spins trying to get away from the Jones defense. Overshoots the hoop. Eskridge with it. Eagles trying to add to the two-point advantage. Down it goes to Parker. Cruz will commit the foul. And Parker, I think that's going to be a non-shooting foul. Got fouled on the turnaround, so it'll be brought in from the baseline. Meanwhile, Garcia coming into the game. Johnson going out for the Falcons. Johnson's got at least two. He may have three fouls. This half alone. Eskridge back over to Jones. Eskridge faking the three into the paint. Drives. He will be fouled, and Eskridge will head to the strike. So Eskridge going to the line, a 65% free throw shooter, 11 points a contest for Eskridge. Seventy-one percent free throw shooting team, and they typically hold their opposition to a little less than that at the strike. But there again, haven't played a team like Daytona State that shoots from the free throw line very well. As a matter of fact, just shoots well. Period. Turnover to Caldwell. Hands it back over to Jones. Braden to Eskridge, looking to lob down to Parker. Instead, the bounce pass to Parker. Into the paint. Took the turn around Cruz, complaining that he was hooked. The officials didn't see it that way, and it's back to a six-point lead for the Eagles. Cruz break into the glass. Missed the shot, but did draw the foul on Jones. So Cruz at the strike. Twenty-one points a game, a one hundred percent free throw shooter, forty-three percent from behind the arc, and fifty-six percent from the floor. Cruz is a very good shooter, and you can't get any better than. No misses. And thus far this season, none of those at the stripe for Cruz. Machado, Machado. 
Parker coming out of the ball game. Kennedy coming in. Jones rattling it in from the corner for three. Trying to reciprocate on the other end. That is Gruon with a miss. Seven point Eagle lead. Five minutes, uh, a little better than, in the half number two. Ball left behind. Garcia's got it. Brings it to the other end of the floor. Lays it in for two. Gruen coming out to defend. Over it goes to Caldwell. Jones with it. Works it to the top of the key, into the paint, feeds to Kennedy, off the glass. Shove from the backside by Giffa, and Kennedy will go to the line. Well, again, we don't have any season stats on Kennedy, which leads to the assumption that he has just recently been cleared to play. Struggled in the first half on the line with a couple of misses and now 0 for 3 from the charity strike. Short on that one too. Cruz with the rebound. Garcia to Statman. Out front it goes to Giffa. That's a long three. That's not quite long enough, but Giffa able to get it. So the rebound keeps it in the hands of the Falcons. Gruon with a miss. Caldwell reaching over everybody to bring down the board. Over to Jones. Opposite side, Eskridge. Eskridge from the stripe out there. Statman's got it. Picks it up top of the key. Feed goes to Gruon. Gruon with a miss. Cruz had it, got it back. Flips it up, puts it in. Three-point game, 12.46 to play. Jones weaving through the paint, then leans to the hoop, underhands it underneath the arms of Statman. Into the paint, Garcia off the glass. Got a trio of Eagles set to come into the ball game at the next dead ball. As Jones will work his way to the coastal north end of the floor. Jones into the paint, off the glass. Eagles first to 60 plus. Garcia bringing it out of the corner. Goes to the hoop. Offensive on Garcia. Runs over Kennedy. Coach Joey Canton's saying, you're kidding me, but the official says, nope. Kennedy was there long enough to draw the foul. Kennedy coming to the sidelines with a host of high and low fives as those three new Eagles come into the game. Hart, Pack, and Chris Smith. Smith came out of the ball game after picking up a technical in the first half and hadn't been back in, but is now. Pack with the three ball. He has been dynamite off the bench for the Eagles. Lead back to eight. Cruz trying to respond on the other end of the floor. Packed with a board. Oh 
Hart's three rims out. Caldwell will get it. Eagles trying to take the game's first double-digit lead. Official taking time, I think, to reset a clock. Got 11.02 on the game clock and 15 on the shot clock. And let's see if we get any changes on one or the other or both. Well, I don't see any changes, but it might have happened before I noticed. That is overthrown, and Garcia, the beneficiary. Hart tipping it out of bounds, pleading that it had gotten the fingertips of Gruon. Hart like, well, hey, man, you can't blame me for trying. Over to Giffa. Feeds it down low. Garcia and easy two. That will slip out of the hands of Hart. McLean back into the ball game. Putting it in play from the near sidelines. There's a collision. Let's see who implemented it. Hart and Garcia wind up on the floor. They're going to charge that one to Hart. Non-shooting foul, but it gets the Falcons closer to shooting. That is foul number four in the half by the Eagles. Grew on over to Giffa. McLean with a handoff to Gruen. Shot no good. And now I think he got a Caldwell foul, bumping the backside of Cruz while he was trying to tip in the Gruen miss. So, Mr. Perfection of the line, Cruz. Well, now they're saying it's on the floor. It did appear that Cruz was in the act of shooting. He was trying to take Gruon's miss and drop it in, but apparently the officials saw it as a rebound and not a putback. And now the Falcons going, aren't we in the bonus, though? That is foul number eight, according to the scoreboard. But it'll be brought in from the baseline. Jumper from Gruon rattles in from the corner. Wasn't that long ago, Eagles with an opportunity to take the game's first double-digit lead, and then it's trimmed to three. Kennedy back into the game. He expands that lead to five. And there's a bump by Hart. And if the scoreboard is accurate, apparently it's not accurate. Because it is saying eight fouls, and they brought it in from the baseline. So apparently there is a maybe a malfunction with the scoreboard indicating eight fouls, and there just must not be that many fouls. And now we're adding a little time to the shot clock. I believe I heard the official say 28, and it's currently on 25. Well, they've got it back to 30. And I believe the target is 28. And there we go. And 
and still some discussion on the sidelines, and it may be related to the indication that there are eight fouls underneath the indicator that would put the Falcon shooting. Well, in reality, now that I pay close attention, that eight is underneath the Falcon side of the scoreboard. So thus, no free throws. Five committed by the Eagles. Nice feed to Garcia, and he will drop it in despite the Smith defense. Can I blame it on old age? I mean, whatever works for you, I'll use. But thus, the reason the Falcons weren't shooting the one and one. There were five Eagle fouls, eight Falcon fouls. And now you got a timeout on the floor. It is asked for by the Eagles. We will take the break. Two, eight, 49 to play. Eagles hanging on to a one-point lead. What's up, y'all? Here at Costa Alabama, about to go and get this leg day started. Let's get it. We're here again after it today. Here. Hey. Oh. hey, let's go, baby. Let's ride. Yes, sir. Well, right there in the middle of that huddle is Coach Chuck Taylor. And what a great job he has done here at Coastal North. They started off with three losses. And with those three losses early, if you were questioning whether this was a team that could compete, they have answered all of those questions since. Took on a Wallace Hansville squad in Wallace when Wallace Hansville was perceived to be a power in the north. Knocked them off took on Sneed State, here, knocked them off, took on Gadsden State, another North Division power, knocked them off, got revenge against a Delgado squad that had beaten the Eagles in overtime here, and now taking on an unbeaten and 11th ranked Falcon squad and giving them everything they can handle through now about 30 minutes of basketball. One point Eagle lead, 8.35 to play. Over to Pack, who's had the hot hand, short on the shot, rebounded by Gruon, but taken away by Hart. Into the corner for Pack. Rims it out. Hard again. Able to get the board. And I think we're getting another reset on the shot clock. Yep, took 10 off from 26 down to 16. And a travel. Braden going to the scores table, ready to come into the ball game. Jones will come out. Falcons put it in play with an opportunity to reclaim the lead. McLean with it out front. Into the paint, off the glass, around the cylinder. Falcons by one. Now it goes to Pack. Pack with a drive. He'll be fouled and will have a chance at the strike. Hey, 
Carl Pack, eight points a contest, a 50-50 free throw shooter, but he had better than eight in the first half alone. And it's certainly been a spark plug in this win for Coastal North. Who will spend some of the holidays down in Florida playing basketball. Meanwhile, Daytona State has Tallahassee Community College next. That'll happen on the 19th. Which I believe is Monday. Out of conference, or not out of conference, but actually all-inclusive conference and out-of-conference games. Coastal North, 604 points coming into today while allowing 554 in those prior eight games. Two, let me say thanks, by the way, to... Daniel had the 80 at all of the Coastals and all the folks here for the opportunity to bring you live coverage of basketball on a Saturday. Cruz off the window. Obviously, if they didn't let us, we couldn't, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to bring you coverage. Our next ACCC coverage happens as Garcia picks up the foul. Happens on the fourth, at four, by the way. Bevel State will be here, and so will we. For men's only basketball. And again, that's a makeup game. That's a second makeup. It was originally slated for November, got Rescheduled for December because of inclement weather in November. And now there's been inclement weather in December that pushes it to January. Smith one for two. Three-pointer from Cruz, just a little bit short. Hart with it. Feeds it over to Kennedy, and Kennedy will slam it in. An emphatic lead change for the Eagles, up by one. Gift for the Cruz. Boy, he is... Very good from the floor. So you're leaving that open that close. Chances are he'll drop it in. He does. And the Falcons by one. Over to Braden. Braden working into the top of the key. Still a chance for that you got to travel. Still a chance for Daytona to hit their per game average of 98, though scoring, what, 27 and 550. I mean, certainly possible. But they haven't been scoring at a clip that would give them 28 in the final 550. Meanwhile, Coastal North looks like they're going to score above their per game average of 75. Foul call, let's see who it's on. That is on Braden. And I believe that is the sixth team foul, but it was on Giffle while in the act of shooting. So Giffle at the line. Give a 71% free throw shooter. Nearly double digits, 9.7 per game for Giffa. 
Eskridge with a miss. Hart able to come down with the board. Back over to Eskridge. Thought about another three. And let's see what we're stopping the clock for. I think it is a 30-second clock issue again. Yep, down to 15. And I think we're going to get a change in the game clock, too. Currently at 521, I think I heard the official say, no, it was the shot clock. And he bumped down a little further, down to 12. Nice shot by Braden to tie us up at 72. Gruon shoots for three, rims out. McCain tipping it to Statman. And then over to Cruz. And I think we've got a shot clock issue again. Yep, putting five on it back to 19. Over goes to Gruon. Rimmed out, able to track it down as Kennedy. Got off his feet, able to find Eskridge. Hart with it. Into the paint. Leaves in the bunny. Wow, what a shot by Giffa. Tied at 74 with four to go. Eskridge to Braden. Fed down to Smith. Smith clearing out the lane and drops it in. Two point eagle lead. 3.43 to play. Leaning in. Grew on for two. We're tied again. Braden down to Smith. Smith over to Askridge. Brings it to the charity stripe. Too strong with a two. Rebounded by Smith. Hart's got it back. Into the corner to an open Braden. He's got the three ball. Timeout on the floor. 3.09 to play. And the Eagles lead it by three. start my day, but first, coffee. Here with my coastal crew. Woo! Woo! And that's how I end my day at Coastal Alabama Community College. Seventy-nine, seventy-six contest. Three oh nine to play. There has never been a lead bigger than eight. And if things stay as is, there is not going to be a 
lead bigger than eight. Rebounded by Garcia, and he will get fouled. So Garcia to shoot. Rest of the game. Eagles into the double bonus. And at least for the moment, Falcons into the bonus. And again, this is where that very good free throw shooting pays off. And it's a one-point game. Braden walking into the timeline on the left side. Kennedy setting the screen. Braden to the glass. Shot no good. Kennedy with the board, and he'll bring it back out. Give a chance for the Eagles to reset their offense. Smith's pass tipped away. Stolen. Garcia's got it on the other end of the floor. Tipped out of bounds. Falcons will keep it. Down by one with 2.21 left. Kennedy just intercepts the inbounds. Hart lays it in. Eagles by three. And that will prompt a Daytona State timeout. So the visitor is now asking for time. 2-11 left to play. And the Eagles trying to put one of the Season's biggest upsets into the books for Coastal North. It's early here at Coast Alabama, but I'm going to head over to the student union and maybe meet some friends, and then I'll head to class. Finally made it to class. See you later, Coastal fam. Two minutes, 11 seconds left to play in this one. Eagles would love one of those runs like they've had on a couple of occasions during this one that expanded the lead to eight. An eight-point lead here with now a little less than two minutes to play would be huge. Cruz off on the three. It is swatted out by Eskridge, but back into the hands of Cruz. Stolen away by Hart. Over to Westridge, and now let's see if the Eagles have to take a little time off the clock. One thirty-five to play. Big possession for Coastal North. They would love to get points out of it. Kennedy trying to get it over to Smith. Hart's got it. Shot clock at two. Off the rim, tipped out, Cruz, Kennedy, and let's see who's got it. It is going to be Daytona State basketball. Off of Kennedy and out of bounds. One seventeen to play. A one possession ball game. Now a huge possession for the Falcons. Give it to Cruz. Takes the turn. What a shot by Cruz. One point game.
Timeout asked for. Fifty-five seconds left to play. And I think Coach is saying, hey, he was hurt. I wasn't asking for time. He was hurt. You can see Coach Taylor pleading his case. And asking for an explanation, having to use a timeout when he was thinking the injury should have stopped play. Fifty-five seconds remain. Well, here we go again. Big possession. I mean, how many times do you hear that late in a ball game, especially in a game like this? But it's another big possession. Coastal North wants to consume time and get points. Primary Falcon goal. Don't let him score. You prefer not to eat a lot of time up, but you can live with that. Tipped out of bounds by Gruon. Shot clock at 13, game clock at 44. Eighty-one, eighty. Eagle Lee. And barring a three or a two with a foul and the and one at it, even if the Eagles score, it'll still be a one possession ball game. But if you're the Eagles, you sure like a one possession game with you in the max of three versus them in possession in a one point game or them with a the lead. Jones with a drive, fires it over to Eskridge, left open for the three, nails it! Big three from Eskridge. It's a two possession game. That was huge. Gruon found by Hart on the three-point try. And Gruon will go to the line. Now they're indicating it was a two-shot foul, not a three. So Gruon apparently had his tippy toes on the arc. And will go to the line shooting two, not three. Not quite as big, but still big. An opportunity for the Falcons to get points. And they're very good at shooting free throws and to do it with the clock stopped. I think the Falcons just realized that the officials saw it as a two-point shot and not a three. Gruon gets both. Twenty three seconds left. In play to Hart. Back over it goes to Jones. Don't have much time to get into mid court, and he's fouled. Cruz does it. That was beneficial to the Eagles because it appeared Jones was just a second or so away from a 10 second violation. (laughs) 
And now huge free throws for Jones. You make them both, you extend it again to a two possession lead. And the Falcons have called time, hoping to ice Jones, the 56% free throw shooter. It's the dreaded appointment. You've put it off long enough. You've run out of excuses. And now you've got to face your fears head on. Fortunately, there's someone there who won't hold your feelings against you. Somebody whose efforts instead will give you your best selfie smile. You'll thank her when it's over. Be somebody. Enroll in the dental assisting program at Coastal Alabama Community College. A big free throw for Jones, trying to make it a two possession game, and he does. From the corner, grew on the miss. Kennedy's got it. Lobbed to the other end of the floor and hits the scoreboard. So it is going to be Daytona State ball. And they will bring it in from the baseline. But the Eagles are going to be informed, do not foul. Eagles looking for a signature win. 4.1 now on the clock. The 11th ranked, previously unbeaten Falcons. Four point one seconds away from absorbing their first loss here in Monroeville. McLean off on the three. This one's over, and it's a victory that belongs to the Eagles. Upsetting the number 11 ranked team in the country, handing them their first defeat of the year. 86-82. What a huge win for the Eagle basketball program. They will improve to six and three overall. Falcons will fall to 12 and one. Big victory for the Eagles. Congratulations to Coach Taylor and company. Well, I think they're getting into the stands going, hey, thanks, fans. What a win for the Eagles. Eighty-six. Eighty-two, your final score. Thanks so much for watching our coverage. For all the folks with Coastal North and Jock Jive, I'm Robert Williamson. So long, everybody.